want to talk about phrasing. Now, this is particularly important with single string lines. When you're, whether you're just playing single string or if you're, you're superimposing the the melody line or an improvised line on the top. Um, phrasing is really important. When you hear all the great singers uh, and how they how they phrase the lines to to uh, when they're interpreting lyrics, it's pretty much it's the same the same kind of thing. So what we're trying to do is, it's not enough just to play um, a line or a, uh, you know, a bar or a couple of bars of, of, of a line. We have to phrase them. There's different ways, and this is really interpretation, how you interpret something. And when we're, we still have that within instrumental music, even though, of course, with a singer, they will phrase according to, to lyrics. And uh, that's, that's very important to them. But we can phrase things in different ways. It's like if you, once you bring phrasing into the music, then it, be, it can become very poetic uh, in the same way that when you, if you were to write, um, write something or if you, if you write a piece of poetry, it has a rhythm to it and a phrasing. And that, that's open to interpretation. That's why, you know, it can be really interesting to hear uh, different musicians playing the same tune and how they phrase and uh, also you get um, you get a lot of musicians the way they phrase becomes pretty much like the the, the way they speak so that it becomes very personal um, you, you'll hear this with a lot of a lot of musicians um, I'm trying to think of people like uh, if you hear Stan Getz interpreting a melody he had a certain way of phrasing, and that becomes very, apart from his sound, of course, uh, it's very identifiable by the way he, he will phrase something and not play a phrase just exactly as it's, as it's written down. And in doing this, uh, we can incorporate a lot of things. We can incorporate a lot of our expressive techniques of, of sliding, hammers, pulls, trills. Um, all, all these kind of things can, can uh, go into the way we, we choose to phrase and interpret um, a, a piece of music. And with our timing, articulation, and of course dynamics as well, you might want to start a phrase quite quietly and then build up. And then, then take the dynamic down again. See, I'm incorporating dynamics and some um, expressive techniques there. Here's another trill. Slides and pulls and hammers. If, with phrasing, um, when you have dynamics in there, it, it stops everything just being on that, that, same, that same level. One of the big differences with, with jazz, as opposed to a lot of popular music, uh, if we want to use that expression, uh, a very broad, broad expression, is that jazz is very similar to classical music in that we use a lot of dynamics. When you, a lot of music you hear, uh, pop music, is, is pretty much, it's, it's on one level, dynamically it's on one level, it's just, it's just at this kind of level all the time. Whereas for us, we're more like classical music, where when we're interpreting, phrasing, um, that dynamics becomes a very important tool for us in, in telling our story of bringing the, the, the volume up and down. Not only the volume, but the intensity of how we play. Sometimes you can play quite wispily, and other times you can, you can play a note really intensely. So these are important things to think about. When you're playing something, don't just think of it as, as playing the, the melody. Um, Think about how you phrase it and the expressive techniques that you use within that. Um, not giving every phrase, every note in the phrase, an equal emphasis. You can you can you can change everything slightly um, in, with your art, articulation and and dynamics. So these are things to, to for us to bear in mind when we're when we're playing a line. If I just take a scale. There's things I can do to start phrasing that. I can, I can do little slides. Hammer on. These little, 
little things I can do to, to, to uh, phrase a scale. And an arpeggio. So I'm not just playing the scale. Try different ways of playing that. Um, some legato things. So you don't want to play staccato all the time. Put some legato things in there, mix it up. Then you can do it with other, other phrases. Rhythmically you can then change it as well. There's all kinds of things that you can do rhythmically, dynamically, with the way you articulate everything, your, your timing, um, to, uh, to phrase things differently. And that's all really, it's all part of uh, uh, how you interpret music. Uh, and phrasing is, is very, very important. And what I would suggest to you, if you really want to learn how to, to phrase a, um, a melody, is really to listen to a lot of singers, There's some of the great classic singers of Nat King Cole and um, Frank Sinatra and Mel Torme. Mel Torme uh, had great phrasing. So listen a lot to singers. I listen a lot to singers, uh, probably more than I do to instrumentalists. I, I really enjoy um, listening to the way singers interpret a song, not just the lyrics, but how they interpret the melody. Um, no, don't forget, we can always learn such a lot from uh, musicians of other instruments, singers, uh, percussionists. Um, don't just limit, li limit yourself to just listening to other guitar players. Uh, just listen to music's music, so wh wh wherever it comes from, whoever's playing it, whatever instrument is being played on, um, it can all have a great effect on our own musical development. Mm -hmm.